In this week's episode of Freelance Fridays, we're going to take a look at what you can do if your design skills suck and you really want to get paying clients. If this is something that interests you, stick around because I'm going to give you some great little tips and ideas to get around these horrible blocks that can cause real issues for so many potential designers. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so when it comes to design, the whole topic is very subjective, but there's something I think we can all agree on and that is when you have a paying client, you want to give them the best product to make sure that they ultimately go away incredibly happy with both your services and what you provide them. Now this is something that can really cause some problems for people that are new to design or not necessarily great at design. So in this video I just want to impart some little different ideas and topics and places you can go to help you get inspiration and also get a head start in the design process. So one of the first things that most of us turn to when it comes to creating something and we're not that happy with the design is somewhere like Theme Forest or somewhere you can purchase pre-designed themes. We go there in the hope that we'll find something that's inspiring and we'll use that theme, we'll go through and buy it and we'll use that for our client and then what we'll find is we'll end up with a product that looks nothing like the actual demo because once you strip all the data out of it and all the images out of it you end up with pretty much a blank canvas you then have to populate with your own designs but there's other things to take into consideration as well now it's a great place to start off with and i've got nothing against theme forest i've used it myself in the past but there are a couple of caveats when it comes to using anything like this the first and the most important one to consider is how long has the developer of this particular theme been around on Theme Forest and will they continue to support this theme moving into the future? Now this is something that I've had paying clients use in the past, then the theme gets dropped and either I've got to go back when the site needs to be updated and there's problems with plugins, I've got to go through the process of then rebuilding the site in something else or I have to then look at how we actually start from scratch again. Neither of those solutions is particularly good for either myself or the client. So there's one thing I'd always say to be careful of when purchasing an official theme from somewhere like Theme Forest. So the next thing to consider when you use a theme like this from somewhere like Theme Forest, and you can use it for one client or maybe two or three clients in total, is that every time you have a new client and you want a new design, you then pick a new theme. And the problem with that is that you then have to work out how that particular theme works. Now, this isn't quite so bad when you're using page builders like Elementor or Visual Composer or something like that because once you learn the fundamentals of that you can build a page to look pretty much any way you want but you still have to learn the theme, its quirks and any issues that might arise from doing it. So another reason why I'd highly recommend against using this method is because every time you have a new client and you want to create a new design, you start with a new theme, which means you've got to learn that theme, you've got to learn how it works, how to set it up, and then once again, once you strip all the data out, you end up with a blank starting point that you have to go through the process all over again. It's much easier to learn the tools you want to use and stick to two or three blank sort of themes, things like OceanWP, Astra, the page builder framework and so on. They give you a great starting point and invest your time in learning those tools and then every time you need to build a new website it becomes considerably quicker. Now this is something I will cover in its own dedicated video further on the line but for now just know that it's something that's worth investing your time and effort in learning those tools. So there's one thing that I really do like about sites like ThemeForest and any of these sort of directories where you can buy commercially designed themes. They're a great way of getting inspiration, something that you can use to go and take a look at, see what kind of encaptures your interest, and then you can take that as a reference point for creating something either for yourself or for your client. Now I'm not suggesting you copy this exactly, but you can go through various different sites and pick and choose different elements that you think are going to work really well in the design that you're working with. Then apply your own colors, your own images and tweaks to end up with something that's a bit more unique, but you take inspiration from it. This is great if you are one of those kinds of people that struggle with design. So if you're using a page builder like Brizzy, Visual Composer or Elementor, most of these will come with some predefined templates and or blocks. Now blocks are basically small pieces that make up an overall page. So for example, a header, a footer, things along those lines. And you can use those blocks to create your entire page using great looking designs that work well with the page builder that you're using. And again, much the way as what I've said with Theme Forest, you can use these as a starting point and then swap over the images, the text and so on to get a good looking end result that's a bit more unique to the project you're working on or what you're trying to create. 
This is something that can speed up the development process, especially if you start to use advanced things like templates with Elementor, which give you the ability then to create a great looking layout and just pull the data in dynamically. Again, we've covered things like this in its own dedicated video, so I'd recommend checking those out. They'll be in the description below and up in the corner right now. So you can take a look at some of the videos so I can demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about for this. But they are great starting points. If you want something a little bit more in depth, then most of these will come with great looking entire page layouts. Some of these are broken down into individual types of pages, so contact pages, about us pages, service pages, and so on. So you can then refine the look and the layout to make sure that it fits into the content you're trying to create. So again, it's a really good starting point. Now, if you feel limited by some of the options that are part of your page builder, there are some great resources out there. Something along the lines, if you use Elementor Pro or Elementor, there's a great resource from Envato Elements, which is where Theme Forest comes from. And these are completely free blocks and templates, again, broken down into different groupings for different styles, different topics, different industry areas. They are great starting points. They're completely free. I've done a video on this, which I'll link in the corner and in, in the description below. So check that out if you want a little bit more inspiration or something to give you a more of a head start. Now, when it comes to design, color is one of the primary things that we need to look at. And if you're the kind of person that struggles with creating great looking color palettes, there are a couple of resources and a couple of things I'd recommend taking a look at to make the process easier. The first is to use Adobe Color CC. This is a free online resource that allows you to choose a starting color and then create color palettes from it, whether you want to use a similar monotone color palette, so you have different shades of the same color, or you want to have analogous color palettes, or you want to have complementary colors. This is a fantastic resource, and if you have an Adobe CC plan, anything you save out of there, you can actually link through then into Photoshop, Illustrator, or any of those tools to create a color palette that's as consistent and accessible in all those different locations. Now, if you kind of struggle with creating a color to start off with, there are two things I'd recommend doing. The first is if you're working for a client, take a look at any material, such as logos and any sort of promotional material they may already have. Use that as a good starting point to choose the primary color and or colors to use as the basis for your color palette. You can then use something like Adobe Color CC to choose additional colors that will work with that. If you don't have access to that, you're not very good at creating good quality, consistent color palettes, then use something like ThemeForest or any of these sites that showcase web design, professional web design, find things that you think are gonna be relevant to your target market or audience. Then you can just simply take a screenshot of that, load it into something like Photoshop, sample those colors out, and you can either use those in conjunction with each other to create a consistent color palette, or you can use that as a starting point inside something like Adobe Color CC. So a great way of creating good looking, consistent, high quality color palettes for your website. Something that will help separate you from designs that may not necessarily be using that consistency of color throughout. Now, once we've covered the color palette, we've got consistency of color through our site. The next thing that will help separate you from an amateur is having a consistent set of fonts that you use. Now, again, like you would with colors, you need to limit the amount of fonts that you use to create consistency through design. So what I mean by that is don't think that with the six headings you have, heading one through six and your paragraphs, you use a different font, different style, different colors and so on for each one of those because what you end up with is a real mishmash. What I would always recommend is two or three fonts and keep it as simple as that. Choose a good strong font for your headings, something that's easy to read for your body text and again something if you need a third font for things like pull quotes or something like that, choose something that's consistent there. So your two or three fonts is gonna give you good quality. But that's all well and good, but how do you find what fonts work well together? Or how do you even pick the fonts? Well, with page builders like Elementor Pro and Brizzy and so on, they all have access to the Google Fonts Library. That's hundreds upon hundreds of great looking fonts in different variations, different weights and so on. They're all completely free to use and generally integrated into your design editor so like I say, if that's Elementor or Elementor Pro, any of those. So if you want to find out, you can just jump over to Google Fonts to a search for that. You'll have access to all the different kinds of fonts broken down into different types of groupings. So we've got things like handwriting, we've got things like sans serif, serif fonts, and so on. So you can break things down to make sure you've got consistent looking fonts, good quality fonts that kind of fit into the design you're trying to create, and then you can even go through and find out what are currently trending and what work well together. So it's a great resource that's integrated into your page design tools. So something I'd highly recommend checking out and using when you're stuck with creating font groups. 
Now, how about you're not that bad at design, but you just need some inspiration. What else can you kind of do to make sure that you're on trend, as it were? Well, there are lots of channels on YouTube that give you access to trends for a particular year. So web design trends for 2018, print trends for 2018. So things that can give you inspiration and get your creative juices flowing. Now, something I would sort of recommend here is don't be restricted to thinking, well, that's for print and that's for screen, that's for web design and so on and so forth. Try to incorporate things into each other. So if you see styles and design ideas and trends that are very, very hot in the sort of print world and you think, well, actually, my target market is very design oriented or my target market is the print market or something like that, then create a design that's consistent with that trend in that particular genre. So you could take different design elements, so things like duotone images or single monotone images or big font faces and huge type layouts and use those in your designs to create something just a little bit different, a little bit sort of off the norm. So you create something that's a bit more eye-catching. There are also some great resources online in print, so you can take a look at different websites, different forums and groups and so on that are specific to this sort of design area. So I'd recommend taking a look at some of those. I'll put a couple of links in the description below so you can take some inspiration from those different areas. But that's kind of just some ideas of what you can do to create great looking websites if you are the kind of person that you're not naturally design orientated or you just need to have some inspiration for your designs. So there we go. There are a couple of great resources you can use to get better at design or to get your creative juices flowing. Speaking of getting better, where do you guys go to find out inspiration for your next design or your next project? Let me know in the comment section below. Pop some links in there. Give us some feedback. We can all share and find some great resources to help us improve moving forward. Well, speaking of the comment section, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know in the comment section why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps us create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.